It's 6 30 on Tuesday, August 9th. This is meeting 1832 of the Town of East Windsor Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, we're here at the East Windsor Park Hill instead of Town Hall tonight. And we have people joining us both in person in the meeting room and over the computer. Um, we have a forum. All our regular members are present. As far as added agenda items, none. Okay. We have four legal notices that I will read for the record. The first one is the East Windsor Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing Tuesday, August 9th at 6.30 p.m. Details regarding how to attend will be published on the commission's agenda and will be made available on the town website. The application is PZ 2022-15. The applicant is the town of East Windsor requesting a text amendment to zoning regulations sections 203, 404, 502, 505.3, 601, 601.8, and 901. A full copy of the application is available on the Planning and Zoning Commission's webpage on the town website. All interested persons may attend this meeting and provide verbal or written comments regarding this application. This legal notice was published in the Journal Inquirer on July 22nd and August 3rd, 2022. The next legal notice is that East Windsor Planning and Zoning Commission will hold the following public hearings on Tuesday, August 9th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Details on how to attend will be published on the commission's agenda and will be made available on the town website. The applications are PZ 2022-18, 16 and 18, but for 18, the applicant is Travis Needenlinger, 137 Scantic Road, requesting a special use permit approval for lot two of a proposed three lot resubdivision. It's map 44, block 33, lot one, the zone is R3, and PZ 2022-16, the applicant again is Travis Niedenlinger, 137 Scantic Road, requesting a resubdivision approval for three residential lots. Map 44, Block 33, Lot 1, Zone R3. A full copy of these applications are available on the Planning and Zoning Commission's webpage of the town website. All interested persons may attend this meeting and provide verbal or written comments regarding these applications. These note, this notice was published in the Journal Inquirer on July 28th and August 4th, 2022. The next legal notice is the East Windsor Planning and Zoning Commission will hold the following public hearing on Tuesday, August 9th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Details regarding how to attend will be published on the commission's agenda and will be made available on the town's website. The application is PZ 2022-17. The applicant is Stephen Henry, 148 North Road, Unit 3, requesting a special use permit for a drug testing lab. Map 124, Block 24, Lot 14, the zone is B3. A full copy of the application is available on the Planning and Zoning Commission's webpage of the town website. All interested persons may attend this meeting and provide verbal or written comments regarding the, this application. 
It was published in the <laughs> Journal Inquirer July 28th, 2022 and August 4th, 2022. And we have the East Windsor Planning and Zoning Commission will be holding the following public hearing on Tuesday, August 9th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Details regarding how to attend will be published on the commission's agenda and will be made available on the town's website. The applicant is North Road Materials, LLC, 297 North Road, requesting a special use permit renewal for soil management facility. Map 117, Block 36, Lot 43B and 43C. The zone is A1 and A2. A full copy of the application is available on the Planning and Zoning Commission's webpage of the town website. All interested persons may attend this meeting and provide verbal or written comments regarding these applications. The notice was published in the Journal Inquirer on July 29th and August 4th, 2022. The next item of business is public participation. And um, is there anybody here in the room who wants to raise something that's not on the agenda tonight? Anybody online who wants to raise something that is not on the agenda tonight? Okay, hearing none, we'll move to approval of minutes. July 26, the regular meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission. We have received the minutes with our package. Does anybody have any suggested edits or corrections they feel need to make to be made? Okay, hearing none, a motion to approve would be in order. I'll make a motion that we approve regular meeting minutes 1831 of the East Windsor Planning Zoning Commission meeting held on July 26, 2022, as presented. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Dave. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I abstain. Okay, All Jim abstained. Frank voted in favor, Peg. So the minutes are approved. Um, receipt of applications. We received an application PZ 2022-20 for 225 South Main Street. It's a zone change request from zone B2 to M1. The applicant is James Stanton. So we're just acknowledging receipt. The next order of business is performance bonds, actions, permit extensions, and road acceptance. And here we have um, a request from Curb Holding Trucking Inc. concerning the NORCAP property <coughs> on the Wapping Road. Do you want to present it? Sure. Uh, Herb came into the office um, Prior to sending in this letter, I had requested, we received a cancellation notice for a bond. It took a little digging um, to figure out what it pertained to, but it is the NORCAT property where Herb Holden Cuffin was doing some excavation activity out there. They had a, a permit uh, for the activity and an associated bond. And that property uh, now has solar on the front side of it. And um, I believe it was transferred and the holdings have not been out there working since 2021 and had asked to be released from the bond. Um, so the letter that was attached is making that request. Um, I responded with the attached letter um, saying that there was a formal procedure and that we would like to have that bond, which is due to expire on August 15th, extended until we can um, <laughs> determine site conditions, get out there and look at the site and see what needs to be done. 
Uh, I've also reached out to the attorney for NORCAP. We have an owner operator situation, the operator has been allowed on the property. So um, I've reached out to their attorney and we can bring it back. Yeah, we got to go out there and take a look at it. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I, I want the, the letter from her little truck who says it was sold as is. You can look at the aerial photos just as is, is not restored. Yeah. <laughs> so. Have they responded to your letter at all? Or? I have a couple of things, uh, not NORCAP, not yet. Not but I, I, has Herb agreed to uh, in, extend the bond? He hasn't said so in so many words just today, but let's see how the commission feels about this and I'll follow up again tomorrow. But I am going out to his apothecary's hall site <clears throat> next week because he's renewing that okay. application. So we'll be in front of him. Okay, so this is pending. pending. No further action needed tonight. Okay. Um, we have the continued public hearing on application PZ 2022-14. It was a text amendment for a tiny home. The applicant is Lucy Foster. We heard um, from the applicant at the last meeting. And my recollection is we were waiting for um, the planning department and the WPCA to finalize their conversation and see if anything needed to be done. At the last meeting, um, we had received an email and a memo from Park and really the superintendent of the Water Pollution Control Authority. And he had concerns about um, Hooking up to the store if necessary, and that would be a separate connection charge. He presented that to the Water Pollution Control Authority at their meeting uh, held on the 27th, and the commission concurred with the comments already prepared that we had received the night before. So, nothing new from them. Okay. Um... Is there anything additional that the applicant would like to put on the record given the um, comments from the WPCA? Um, no, only because it's not pertaining to our particular situation. We're not on this rule. It is a public hearing. Is there anybody who would like to comment on this particular um, application? Who's in the room? Is there anybody online that would like to add comment that wasn't already put on the record? Uh, and it's Noreen Farmer, 247 South Water Street. I just wanted to reiterate that I think it's a really good idea. And I hope that you let them proceed with this plan and change the text to allow it. Okay. Thank you. Um, you want me to just go through the four, four items on the memo that I included in the packet? Sure. <clears throat> um, so there were sort of four outstanding questions or discussion points that I took away from the last meeting, um, which I sort of outlined. Um, the first one was sort of clarifying or making sure that these units would not be rented. Um, so we took away or are suggesting that the language be removed that just says shall not be rented, which includes um, and, and is replaced with a uh, requirement that they essentially provide documentation on a two year basis that the occupant is one of either the owner or the owner of the, the owner of the unit is either the occupant or the property owner. Um, rather than saying two years following approval, which is then a different date every time. Um, October, I, I consulted with the assessor. And so the grand list is as of October 1. So submission for October would fall in line with sort of that new year and 
you can start to know that these things will come in the early fall. Um, the second one was that it would only be allowed accessory to a single family dwelling, not to some other type of, of use. Um, so, so basically, there's existing language in 407.2c, uh, which clarifies that and, and says that it um, shall not be included unless it's accessory to a single family dwelling. Um, number three, as Ruth touched on, related to the uh, connections in the, in the sewer service area. So they would currently have to connect them. That's the WPCA sort of process. And um, frankly, not a hill we're need to die on today because it's, it's not something that we really thought about. And how you get that type of connection is not really something that we would deal with in the zoning regs. So mm -hmm. if they're in the sewer service area, they need to deal with the WPCA. And the regulations require that they provide documentation that they've had a conversation with the WPCA before they submit to you. So at least it's not going to be a situation where they come to you, they, they receive an approval, and then WPCA says, you need to pay us seven grand to connect. So at least we'll know when that comes in that if they're in the zero service area, they've had that discussion. Um, the last thing related to registration, um, and I included in there that essentially, I, I again spoke with the assessor, and there's a, a bill um, which is changing how certain vehicles and trailers are categorized, taxed, and registered in Connecticut. Um, and so based upon that, and how they're going to be treated and what information we'll have. Um, I'm recommending that you remove 407.2a, um, which basically said that it shall not be registered as one of the following per the DMV. Um, again, because they are changing how they register these things, stuff that's personal property now may not be, stuff that is a vehicle now may become personal property. We don't want to have language that points to something that we don't know what it will say. Uh, in a year. Um, I also think that our definitions and the way that we've categorized this to this point make it redundant to the point where that language doesn't provide as much protection that we didn't already have. So those four comments are reflected essentially um, in the conditions. Um, the only one that is not specifically listed in our memo is again to create consistency 4072A we're replacing um, the word independent with separate because we use the term separate elsewhere and that creates consistency. Okay, thank you. Um, last call for comment from the room. Last call for comment from online. Okay. Do people on the commission have further questions for staff or do you want to close this public hearing? One quick question. Why is it two years instead of one? Um, I I sort of started at two because residency, not something that changed incredibly often. So every one year seemed to be perhaps a little bit frequent. If the commission felt like two years was too long, that's something that you could change, but um, so I started with, with two years as a baseline. I just see this as being for, you know, elderly parents or grandparents that uh, hopefully they, they, they have two years, but they might pass. So I think one year would be more appropriate, but I, I can go along with two if that's what the commission wants. Hmm. I'm comfortable trying it at two. We could always come back if it, is becomes very popular and there's questions of residency, but it's the first decision. So Mike, how are we leading out the people trying to take a mobile home and park it there? So in the in the actual language proposed, we have criteria which which sort of define what it is. Um, the building materials, number one, the, number two, we're requiring that it have a, a um, Pitch roof. Yeah, um, we're including the, the R values yeah. right? um, because, and that was based upon sort of review of four season mobile homes and what values they provide. 
and then the applicant working with her builder to determine what they could provide. So you said 407-2A was getting stricken, but all the R values are in 407. It's just, no, not the whole All just, 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 just that. Just all that. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so you, so you weed out that right there with the R value and the wall, the insulation, the, the pitch roof, that will weed all that out. Yeah, I think that for many of them, you know, you could also make the argument, though, be a little bit harder, that um, a, a camp trailer is not designed for permanent occupancy. And even if you look at the statutory definitions, the way that they've got them all written, it says recreational use and camping. Nothing talks about permanent dwelling. But again, we're not in control of those statutes. So, um, I just want to make sure we're covered because people are going to say, hey, I'm going to take my mobile home stick in my backyard. That, right. That's what you're going to get some of that, I'm sure. Right. And, and so, you know, the construction materials not being whatever, most mobile homes are sort of a, I don't even know, they're thin wall. Last yeah. Last yeah, they're wall. thin wall. Right. right. So, those are not designed to be permanent construction. They don't provide the R value, they don't have the peak through. Um, so, it's also a special permit. Yeah. Right. So, there's no as of right here. Comes in. Okay. And, but is there any do we, need, do we need to make a consideration on the age of the unit? What do you mean? The age of the, the home? Right. If it's on if it's on wheels and could be moved from site to site. I mean, somebody could purchase a used one. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I I'm the reason I'm saying that is I've been involved with like seasonal campgrounds where they won't allow you to bring anything that's over three years old. Oh. Because they figure once you park it there, it may stay there a long time. So they won't allow you to bring in a 15-year-old unit. To park it there and allow it to just you know dilapidate at that point yeah i don't know i mean they haven't been around long enough for us to have any someone that's going to have something that's 20 years old i mean it still has to based on the regs be consistently capable of being removed from the site so it's got to be in a condition that you can haul it out of there um, based upon the regs so if it got to that point i mean I think that it would be subject to any of the other codes and ordinances that so if the town did adopt a property maintenance code and things were falling apart, I don't I mean, it's still a falling. Um, I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, I understand it's kind of new and maybe something that down the road will have to revisit. Well, it's all special use permits. Right. Mm -hmm. Other questions from the commission, or do you want to close the public hearing? No, fine, fine. We're good then. Does someone want to make a motion to close this public hearing? I'll make a motion. We close the public hearing for application PZ 2022-14, the text amendment of section 407.2, tiny house on wheels. The applicant is Lucy Foster. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Okay. Um, we have a potential motion drafted by Mike in the memo dated August 4th. Mm -hmm. You want to take up um, approval? I'll make a motion to approve application PZ 2022-14, a text amendment to section 407.2, tiny houses on wheels, the applicant, Lucy Foster. This approval is granted subject to conformance with the application materials and or reference plans as may be modified by the commission at this approval and the following conditions and modifications, finding number one and conditions one through four listed in a memo from Mike D'Amato, dated August 4th, 2022. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Peg, that's unanimous. It's approved. Thank you. We have a uh, new public hearing now on application PZ 2022-15. It's a uh, amendment to the town zoning regulations drafted by staff. 
The applicant is the town of East Windsor. There are things we have been discussing as a commission. Um, and they're mostly technical corrections, clarifications, um, and um, adding a section on electric vehicles con consistent with state statutes. Uh, Ruth, Ann, do you want to sure. present? At the very back of the packet of information, there's a version of the amendments that have like <laughs> comments on the side more things okay. to tell to where these things came from, what the purpose is. Uh, the first one's in the definition section, and it's the definition of a kennel. If you remember, we had talked about the confusion during dog licensing season, people with several pets. And so we added the word uh, for profit, with parenthetically saying, including but not limiting, limited to breeding or boarding. Yes. Great word, just trying to nip that one. Okay. Then, the next one has to do with recreational vehicles, um, trying to give a little more leeway to folks um, and clarifying language. And so we typically, it, the regulations read now that the RVs are not to be stored in the front yard or side yard. And we've taken out the side yard to give a little breathing room there. And then, um, Ten within not within ten feet of a property line instead of the property line. That's just clarification. Again, you can see it's be no more than one of it said either before thing each type so that you could have it was confusing. Not one more than either more than one of either no just of each type. And then the other uh, adjustment is we had a forty eight hour time limit to be in a driveway. And we changed that to five days to get more time for loading and unloading and prepping for vacation. And then 901.2, this is clarification. Um, we had in there that no building permit shall be issued unless a zoning permit has been issued. We just wanted to clarify unless for any project which requires a zoning permit. Not getting our nose into every single thing that's happened in the company. <laughs> um, and in section um, 502, we added 14, which is this is something to help out um, the plazas in the B3 area where they're doing tenant changes, where we have folks trying to move in and open a small business and they bring them in for a special use permit. We're looking to alleviate that but if there's no change to the building structure or site layout, that it would be a zoning permit, like a change of use, change of occupancy, um, rather than coming for special use permit. Do we need to add something that as long as it's a permitted use? We certainly can. So I think that we, you know, for every zone, we do, you know, look at that's, what can we do in a B3? Like right. Go to that section. And then when you do that, you said you need know, special use. <laughs> that's we'd like to say. In my right. so. the, the new section, 601.8, is the alternative energy infrastructure. This does, as Ann had said, brings in the public act that was just passed. It takes effect in January um, for developments, new developments with 30 or more parking spaces, commercial developments, and multi unit residential would have to put 10% uh, EV charging on site. Then we added a section that kind of deals with um, existing and retrofitting. Folks that are looking to take advantage of the opportunities to add to the electric charging um, infrastructure to um, lessen or incentivize through um, 
adjusting setbacks for, for structures. Um, one of the things we did receive comments on this one because we chose four feet tall, charging units less than four feet tall, requiring less than five square feet of disturbance, not be considered a structure. Um, we had a presentation, like an informal discussion, uh, Don's auto body, and that those quick charge units are seven and a half feet tall. And so, but disturb less than five square feet, <laughs> but they, they stand taller. And um, so any of them at that quick speed capacity are gonna be that tall. So I wanted to put out there that maybe we'd like to change that to less than eight feet. Well, they might get smaller in time, <clears throat> the units, mm -hmm. or dig a hole. Not to exceed. Not exceed. Do we need any language to do with the line of sight? So we do have conditions on this. Uh, well, we have it on the, the passive solar canopies. Right. We're but not, we're not the charging stations themselves. If it's seven feet tall, that could now become a line of sight. Yeah. Um, I could take that, the proposed location, and not just drop it on. Um, but, oh, that's Anything else on the EV portion? We have solar canopies in here. Remember that one? Um, so passive solar canopies, freestanding canopies, uh, including energy, which includes solar and other alternative energy systems proposed in construction of site development shall comply with all applicable setbacks as defined in section 501 of these regulations. And then we have the Planning and Zoning Commission through the issuance of a special permit may reduce any applicable setback by up to 50% and uh, with a two third vote on the following, as long as you've demonstrated the proposed location will not disrupt the on-site traffic circulation. Any increased drainage or runoff generated by the proposed canopy will not discharge towards adjacent property lines. The canopy design and proposed location will not create glare to adjacent property. And for the prop proposed, the purpose of the proposed canopy, as supported by the submitted application materials, is to reduce the overall dependency of the building or tenant on traditional energy systems. I want to mention the um, temporary or seasonal outdoor dining. I'll move on to that one. Yeah, the next one, uh, it's not part of this alternative energy structure, but we did for outdoor dining. We adjusted the language here really to allow for the placement of food trucks. There's been a lot of inquiries that come in um, looking to establish whether at a gas station or at a you know, plaza to, to do a pop-up and we just have a no food trucks allowed going on and we're looking to um, put something out there that would allow for that. Good idea. So those are the proposed changes. Um, are there other questions from the commission before we open it to the public motion? Is there anybody in the room who would like to comment on um, this application to amend the zoning regulations, PZ 
2022-15. Yes, could you please identify yourself for the record? Yes, Merrick Hammett, 307 North Road. I think all of these ideas are great. I'm just looking for a little clarification on one of them. You mentioned the EV stations for multifamily complexes with 30 or more apartment spaces. How does that apply to multifamily developments, single units, for example? It's already pre approved, so it's grandfather, right? But if it was, but if it was new, I think, we were, I think that when we were reading the bill, it requires that based upon the date of the issuance of the bill. And I also think it applied to condo complexes. So I think it's January 1st, 2023. Any project for which a building permit is issued, state statute says you got to do it. But it's based upon the date of the permit. I think that's what we read, but I don't have any problems. Yeah, I just don't know how it would apply to that development because they were supposed to be based on single family houses and as a station. It doesn't really make sense for that type of development. If someone wants to get in that, I don't know. Is that revolving around like a parking lot environment that you're talking 31 spaces in parking? Yep. Yeah, right. but That's some condo complexes have shared yeah. parking. So yeah. yours may fall more under like a like a development plan or you know a, um, would a waiver be maybe required at that point? I know what I don't know it's that intended to be for, but well, I know that this is this, I don't think this the is statute, a state statute. This is right. our yeah. doing. This is what the state is saying now. So we would have to go back to the state statute and see what it says specifically to answer your question. Okay. It, whether we would have power yeah, to waive it, a state statute. Does I subdivision doubt. fall under these requirements? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there no, were waivers no, in the no, statute. Can I just read the language so that sure. folks in here can like give some light to the mic? So electric vehicle charging, any new commercial development or multi-unit residential development, which include 30 or more parking spaces for passenger vehicles shall include all the necessary infrastructure required to support electric vehicle charging stations in not less than 10% Required parking spaces. Ten percent of the required parking spaces. Such charging stations shall, at a minimum, be capable of providing two hundred maybe to two hundred forty volts of alternate current, as defined by Chapter Two Seventy Seven, Section Six Hundred Nine F of the Connecticut General Statute, as amended. So. Just listening, it almost like, seems like it wouldn't fall under that because you're not having 30 parking spaces for a development. Each unit would have, have its own garage. Yeah. Yeah. And these would be a 30 continuous spaces. I would, yeah. I would really cut it that way. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments in the room on this? I have a question on the RV storage. Could you identify yourself for the record, please? Greg Bogan, 34 Woodsville Road. How do you differentiate if somebody's visiting parked in the driveway with you know, a small motorhome versus the storage? If they're from out of state, you visit them so they can see these kind of locations. How do you know the difference without getting a citation or a warning from the town? Well, by the time somebody complains about it <laughs> and, and you get there, the tools will be up and you'll be gone. So I just like that five days. I can days. just add that the enforcement um, procedure is the first letter of inquiry. If something looks to be, you know, okay. someone's living in a in a trailer, we're going to send a letter and ask, you know, kind of point out. We think this might be the issue. This could be a violation here, and then ask. And like you folks did, you came in with us 
to a county office and we'll see what was happening. Um, if it's two weeks, there's a two week visit, then you know that's going to resolve itself. And if not, you know, time, there's time frames in the letters, and then things will progress. By the time the staff gets to it, will be a month anyway. So. <laughs> wow. Wait a minute. I mean, what is public works going on? <laughs> I mean, he Maine, Massachusetts. And Connecticut for about two months straight, off and on. He said he would show up, he will stay, he will go to Massachusetts and come back. And if he perceived that he's constantly hanging. But he'll he'll be for we're, we're saying item number three just needs to be here the five days. It says any resident recreational vehicle or both parked or stored in any zone district, whether it be residential or non residential. Shall not be used for living, sleeping, or housekeeping purposes. So it's a not even that. I think you probably have to wait for a complaint before that. Here's another question on the complaint. If somebody complains to the town because he was there, they don't give you that name of the person that complained. That I don't know. That can be staff can. Address that, I think. A lot of times we do. We have the, the complaint, the person who's called in a complaint or stopped by with one. We ask them to fill out a form. There's a web portal as well. Um, so we have an email, you know, address. Um, and some we don't have the name. But for the most part, we're asking. If a, if a complaint is given to you without a name or address, do you? Ignore it or you look into it. Yeah. You allow an anonymous complaints. It seems to me that we, at least legally, why why should you? you I mean anybody could just call and say, I, I just like I just like the smell of town. <laughs> yeah. so, I, I, I would check with the town lawyer, see if you could even have to process that that complaint. I would like to shed a little light on something that Mr. Flossman was talking about as far as the EV chargers and the height and the line of sight and stuff. Um, the reason that they're so tall and structured is to do with the cord length. So if they were too short to the ground, they would have to have some kind of a retractable retractor. cord. Right. They don't. Mm -hmm. um, that's the reason why the height is what it is, is for the length in which you need to move the cord to get to the car so the cord is not on the ground. Um, if that helps in any fashion whatsoever. No, my, my point was just that line of sight has to be considered when you're just picking placement. Absolutely. That's, that's why I wanted that added in there. So yeah. that somebody looked at line of sight before they decided on where to place one. Gotcha. Gotcha. Excuse me, was that the same person speaking? Could you identify yourself, I'm please? Sorry, Don, Don Otto Pearson. It was Don from Don's Auto. Okay, thank you. Anyone else in the room have comments they want to make on this application? Anyone online who wants to comment on this application? Okay. Are we, are we wordsmithing something with this RV part? And would we need to wordsmith something on the site line? For the EV charges. So, um, do we want to continue this or? Do we have um okay. and are, are we okay with the RV language? Are we gonna be modifying that at all? Because like I said, with that with that set item number, you know, three. Item three is existing. It's not part of the 
It's only the stuff in red that we're Oh, I understand that, but I mean, now when we're making modifications, is that something we want to leave alone? Because that doesn't, that basically doesn't let you spend one night in it. So change that to the five. Well, or, it's an intention. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. It's five days, consecutive days. Because they're reset. Hmm? After five days, I pull out, go somewhere else, come back to it, get five more days. Uh, no, I, I yeah, understand. It seems like it uh -huh. would. I mean, but I'm, but I understand if you have somebody that comes by to visit and you. Know, Jimmy just bought a motor home. Yeah, he's probably gonna have to take the motor. Take the motor on. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean. It also seems to me when there's a power failure, um, people may choose to sleep in it to have air conditioning. Sure. Well, that's a yeah, crazy situation. Yeah. But, kids, my kids use it as a you know fun play. camp out, you know. Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I just think you know we could come up with a hundred different situations. I mean, I, I yeah. Uh, I, I just said, you know, yeah, how do we come up with the language that you just don't turn it into another residence? That's I, all. Yeah, because written it's yeah. okay and until until we get some problems and we are just let it go. Well, what is I it? Mean, that, otherwise, you could as as written now, Frankie, you can't spend a single night in there. Yeah, as written, some of these are had problems. Yeah, somebody calling. Mm -hmm. So you think that's okay? Your grandkids want to go spend the night in the camper and something they can't? They should be able to. I'm doing what the town can tell me. I mean, <laughs> <but we're, laughs> this is our time now to fix it. You know? well, it's common sense and logic. You know? And I think our town staff is intelligent enough to be able to to decipher that but and, the, the, and act accordingly. But it's in the regulation. But the policy, the policy can't be to be lawless and let us enforce it. You know? That can't puts a lot of burden on the town staff. So well, they, have, they don't like the job getting done. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait a minute. No, it's taking off. Here, give them my clear okay. substance. You know, that it's a generator on a certain area. And after that, it has to be moved and stored outside of whatever. Not in the front yard. Are. So I, I would not, I guess I want to put a highlighter on what we said earlier about enforcement. The first step in the process is a notice, which by statute is 30 days. Even if they get a notice, even if they're found to be in violation, mm -hmm. they have 30 days to rectify the situation. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If we allow someone to live for any period of time, for 30 days. Drive, that's Whether it be right. for a day or for a month, then we now have to deal with sanitation. Where is it going? The health department is going to be involved. I think it's really it's far easier to say someone is visiting, fam, families visiting for seven days, than it is to come up with some qualifying statement that's going to allow for what you're trying to do and not just allow someone to live in their driveway and run a hose across the sidewalk or wherever to get water. And it's I don't know. You could speak to the number of complaints that have come in, but I, I think that it's yeah, thirty days. I, I leave it as it is. Yeah, it's not even worth two cents. But right, yeah, I agree. Danielle has sort of worked up a process of enforcement that seems to be very effective and is not draconian. So if someone says we're visiting from out of state and we're going to be here for seven days, I, I don't it's see her. It's going to solve itself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Amen. Until the complaint comes back in, <laughs> send them somewhere else. Okay, so if we feel like we had adequate discussion and comment, a motion to close the public hearing would be in order. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing on PZ 2022 15, the Town of East Windsor, text amendment to zoning regulation section 203 404 502. 505.3, 601, 601.8, and 901. And the applicant being Town of East Windsor. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Yeah. Any discussion? Yes, Peg? That was Jim for the second. Dave. Dave, Dave thank you.
Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous, Peg. Thank you. So with the notes, um, are we ready to consider a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve application PZ 2022-15 of the Town of East Windsor for the text amendment to various sections of the East Windsor zoning regulations. Proposed changes to section 203 definitions, 404 permitted accessory use, 901 administration by staff, 502 permitted use in business and industrial districts, 505.3 outdoor dining and the addition of a new subsection to 601 off street parking, 601.8 alternative energy infrastructure as depicted in the documents entitled proposed zoning amend, uh, amendments dated June 2022 with uh, revisions made by the commission to provide uh, there is a, a there is a clear line of sight uh, and findings that uh, these changes are consistent with the East Windsor plan of conservation and development by encouraging business growth within the B3 zone of the Northern Business Corridor, supporting new renewable infrastructure needs and improving quality of life. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Dave. Any discussion? Um, height limitations. Are you changing oh, yeah. that? So I was going to say that added language I put in there really um, more specifically would be the, the revision to 6018B. And you would say changing the restriction to less than eight feet from four, and then adding that provided there's a clear line of sight to, to that. So that's 601.8 feet revised. Okay, I amend my motion to edit section 601.8B, changing the height restriction from four feet to eight feet and adding the provision for maintaining a clear line of sight. Is there a second again? Three seconds. Three seconds. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Peg, that's unanimous. Okay. Okay. The next new public hearing is PZ 2022-16 and 18. 137 Scantic Road resubdivision and a special use permit. The applicant is Travis Needlinger. So, yes. Could you identify yourself for the record, please? Uh, for the record, my name is TJ Baresi. I'm a licensed engineer, I'm a licensed uh, plant surveyor. I'm the principal owner of Baresi School Street in Windsor, off the Florida and Cadian Station Road. Uh, tonight, representing Travis Niedlinger regarding an application for three lots in subdivision. Three subdivision includes a real lot by definition, which requires a special use permit. Applicant is also requesting two waivers during this application. Under section 6.3, sidewalks and pathways, and under section 6.5, streetlights. And the applicant is also proposing a fee in the local space. So just keep that in mind. Uh, property is known as 137 Scantic Road. It's located on the east side of Scantic Road, immediately uh, south of Cemetery, immediately north of Willow. Uh, it's shown as lot one in black 33 on map 44. Entire parcel contains 37.810 acres in the R3 residency zone. <coughs> Property is currently the home of the applicant. This is actually a single family home right here that's possible to access off of Scantic Road or Long Driveway. 
cost of serve by uh, well and septic. Uh, the three last subdivision takes place in the uh, southwest corner of the property. Um, the, the area of this three lot subdivision of the 37 acres is 11.7 acres. Wetlands do exist in the area of development. The uh, limited wetlands were marked in the field by wood clothing of the American Services. They're field located by our office and mapped as you see uh, on the plan. The balance of the wetlands over this area here, uh, further away from the development, was taken from the uh, town land records. Go out there today, see what you'll see. Uh, our office prepared a topographic survey of the property. <coughs> it's fairly flat, uh, has a gentle slope in a northeasterly direction towards some of the wetland pockets that were uh, marked out on the flag. Uh, there is an existing swale right along uh, Scandrick Road, <coughs> runs in this direction, uh, right to left across the plan, and it eventually terminates at one of the wetland pockets uh, over this area here. Uh, there is an existing dirt drive that cuts through the property. <coughs> I believe that was probably used when they did some logging. The property is wooded. However, the other story is heavily littered with some treetops, an indication that someone went in there, uh, did do some forestry work, you know, but that's the treetops were kind of in the mess of the property, but it is. Uh, this area here is an open area. The other story and the, and the, uh, the tree limbs have all been cleaned up in this area. There's also a clear area that heads to this back portion here. Uh, back in February 22, 2022, uh, we did soils tests uh, with the North Central District um, for these all three lots of areas. We also installed some monitoring pipes to monitor the water, water table level, and all that was done to help us with the septic system defects. As far as the subdivision, <coughs> yes. As I mentioned, after the seeking uh, three new residential lots, frontage lots on Scandrick Road, uh, he'll maintain uh, the rest of the property as, as 137 Scandrick. Uh, all three lots uh, meet the regulations for uh, minimum lot area, frontage, uh, buildable area, all those things that, that, that are required. Uh, the area of lot one is 1.436 acres. Uh, lot two, which is the uh, Consider the rear lot 7.717 and lot three on this area here, uh, 2.509. Uh, as Ed said, we also don't have the uh, required overall area with the minimum of 30,000 square feet. Should you go for your trading plan? Uh, grading plan shows uh, conceptual house locations, uh, proposed driveways, agreements with a shed on there. I think they might want to shed at some point in time. Uh, all lots are accessed directly on Scandrick Road. Uh, this rear lot here, uh, the proposed driveway is 12 feet wide with an extra three feet on each side, giving you a total 18 feet foot wide passable area for emergency vehicles. All lots to be served by wells and septic. Uh, the septic system for each lot designed for three bedroom homes. As I said, we monitored the water table, did percolation tests, deep tests with, with North Central. All these septic systems are designed based on all that data uh, and uh, sized appropriately with flow lines, bottom elevation flow lines, back of the tank, back of the house. All those elevations are shown. Uh, each house has a uh, finished floor, top of wall, garage floor, basement floor, bottom of footing elevation is indicated just to really demonstrate that we can get this thing to work. That has been uh, submitted to North Central. Uh, we just replied today, actually. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, the grading plan has multiple contours, also flat grades throughout, uh, demonstrate positive drainage away from the houses. Uh, this drill out back here is created with a, uh, a walkout 
that was part of our to get through the to help out with the wetland permit the walkout minimizes some of the grading that's built behind this area which is kind of creeping towards uh, the wetlands in the regulated areas so doing a walk out there is a prudent feasible alternative to uh, uh, not doing the walk out um, the uh, for the driveway through here, like I said, there's an existing swale along Scantic Road. Obviously, we put the driveway in, we can't stop the water. So, each driveway would have a little cross culvert pipe. Um, drainage study was prepared uh, showing the existing condition, proposed conditions. All uh, that was submitted uh, to the town, which I think we went to Dr. Len Norton. And the uh, drainage study does demonstrate that the size of the, the pipes we're proposing are sufficient size. So pipe to pipe, a nice grass on swale, grass on swale, swale terminating with a, the uh, swale from coming kind of uh, As far as the road controls, kind of a wetlands thing, but with all the common ones, structure and pads, silt fence, back piles, permanent seating, all that kind of stuff. No sign of plants saying any disturbed air will be permanently stabilized before the road controls are removed. Uh, as you can see, all this area has, will eventually be cleared at some point in time, but it helps soften the exposure of these new homes and kind of re beautify the streetscape. We've shown some new trees behind the swale uh, off the road again to kind of soften the exposure and restore some, some trees along the, the road. Um, that's kind of an overview of what we're proposing to do. Um, like I said, we did meet with wetlands last month, last week, and we got the approval. Uh, we got a letter from WPCA uh, saying this is not a sewer service area so it's in the, under the jurisdiction of North Central. Uh, North Central did send us a letter today uh, stating that the soils are suitable for on site septic. Uh, we want a little tweak here and there, a little, little shift here, a little shift there, but nothing. Uh, got comments from the town engineer. Most of them are just general commentaries and housekeeping notes that I got to uh, address. Uh, the one little design change he recommended the first 20 feet of the drive when we have sloping back towards Scantic Road. That's a maneuver that I prefer. Kind of going down and take a better sight line and just have an easier maneuver. He wants, he does not want. That drainage coming down into Scantic Road. So the little the driveways meet Scantic Road, we're going to tweak that design a little bit to satisfy his, his balance. But no, no big deal, but kind of just do what I that was idea. Uh, Tom Fanner, she sent me an email uh, with a couple comments. Uh, again, just requesting some notes be added, some notes be changed, some notes be removed. Uh, that's all the comments we received to this point. They all seem very reasonable and something we're more than happy to comply with. Well, so a lot, of, a lot of copy and paste there, most friends. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> a lot of standard stuff on the job. <clears throat> uh, I have a little, little, sorry, I have one question. Don't require uh, rear lot driveway screens of that driveway going up. One of the uh, comments from the town planner was. Uh, to, to show some vegetation. Oh, sir. Pull that right up there. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. The rear lot. You're here and. Uh... Oh, I'll start your question. That's it. I had to add it right, right up. And how, right, how wide is that driveway going in the back? A total of 18 feet. That's not wide enough for the, a rear lot. The regs are 12. The, 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 the rear lots? The yeah. pavement's 12, and then you got three feet. On each side, emergency vehicle. So emergency vehicle. Yeah, item number D. No, no, I believe. Yeah, you don't have to. I thought it was bigger. So look. Now we are crossing these driveways with the pipe. Are you putting flared ends in it? Just looks like you're dropping the pipes into a, uh, a so rip no, wrap. We have a rip wrap. Uh, so no flared ends. No flared ends. And how far are you pushing them off the driveway? They are. Approximately 25 feet off the gutter of the Road. Okay. 
And the other big thing is we never usually sign off on an application that Lenny signs off. I spoke with him today about this and the um, amendments to the plan. Yeah. And um, so we have that written into the draft motion to, to um, <clears throat> put all these changes into the plan. So you get a copy of the amendment or the updated plans? They haven't been updated yet. Yeah. So that's what I'm getting. Oh. So usually, I usually, what I usually do is just comment from everybody. And they just revise the plans once at the end because there would be we'd have to make another both sets of plans with revisions and get it back again. Make another support because it's, it's a lot. Then we'll be looking for his comments to be incorporated in, the, in that before I say, okay, make it final for the commission to sign. Mm -hmm. and like I said, all, all his comments were changed, you know, so no corrections, things that could here and there. Uh, the so, only, Substantial ones okay. don't have, and it's it's literally it just 40 feet long or something. So basically, an area like this that was going out back out to the road, and again, just so you can have a downgrade into the road when you're making that maneuver, that's the maneuver I prefer. That's why I kind of decided that. The problem is, is there's no drainage on the street, you're pushing them. No, driveway right. water into the street, and now we have icing issues and all that. No, I, I, I understand the comment. Yeah. And, but I, actually, after this comment, I went back out there, and believe it or not, it, it is a nice sheet flow right off. There's no natural gutter or anything, but you're right. During the winter time, when you get the sand in your, your flower, you're going to get a natural gutter area. So, so that's water coming out. I, I, I totally understand. So, Ruth and the um, potential motion to approve has conditions which must be met prior to signing of Mylar's, all of Lenny's. That specific one for the are included in there is not, but I was just thinking we could put it, um, we could add it to like what would be changed on the plan. Or we could put it up where a copy of the final approved plans would be submitted to the planning development and town engineer. That could be handled administratively. Mm -hmm. I, I would think. Yeah. I, I don't want to make a habit of that. We, we never usually do that. <clears throat> usually, then it signs off on everything. <clears throat> This is um, a public hearing. Is there anybody in the <clears throat> room who would like to offer comments on this? Anybody online who would like to comment? Okay. With that, I have one other question. Um, normally the street tree requirements wouldn't fall under a rear lot because of the fact of lack of frontage. But in this case, that rear lot does carry around and have more frontage on the street. Mm -hmm. Would we require street trees on the the frontage of the of the rear lot? I, okay, so it will it will remain vegetated. Yes. The entire rear lot is well, yeah, but the, it loops around back to yeah. having yeah. street frontage again. So mm -hmm. That's why I was just asking the fact that it has frontage. Yeah. One comment I'd, I'd like to make about the revised plans. I spoke with Ruth and Danielle last week, I think it was, and she asked about changes to the plans. And I said, I'll do whatever you want. Um, I don't normally do that. I normally get the weapon approval, got their conditions. Any other approvals get their condition. Town engineer, incorporate, make all those changes to the plans at once at the very end, submit another set for, for staff review, and then it's usually one or two little things after that. But I kind of, I, I did actually out, I said, I'll do whatever you want. I, I don't do a lot of work in East Member, I'm not familiar with your, your procedures here. So I kind of let her dictate what she wanted me to do. And she did say, no, that's fine. So we'll just, they call it changes at once. 
And I was looking to see if I had that in there. I don't, I don't think that that's part of the part of So where your pipe's going in the driveway. Yep. Each end, you don't show any riprap on the inlet end. I would call it the inlet end because the water flows. Correct. And you're not going to put in. No, not normally. Not normally. So what's going to stop sedimentation, everything coming out of the wetlands? Way over. Keep going. Way over there? No, right right at the end of that. Yeah, either end. You have no riprap or flared ends or anything. This is the ground size well. What about on the other, the, the cross, the first cross? Right there? Yep. What's there? Nothing. Nothing. With the pipe in. Little depression. You know, this area here is lower than up here. You know, this water goes down that way. Goes away. And if I if I may interject, I'm Jim Giorgio, um, 40 Barber Hill Road. I'm actually going to be the one building these homes. Um, TJ, correct me if I'm wrong. I think we are doing those pipe crossings pretty much at grade <coughs> of the existing swell. Correct. Yeah. So in order to riprap that, we would actually end up with probably more of a plunge pool going into it versus it flowing in it. But isn't and that what you want? Slow the water, water down and then go to the next crossing. Well, right now, I mean, what we're planning on doing is only going to improve that swale. We're not looking to worsen it. I'd rather see the plunge pool at the end of each um, pipe instead of in front of it, because, like I said, now you're going to all that debris or sediment off the road is going to come that's, that front plunge pool. It's just a question. No, it's not, not for me to no. question. I'm not an engineer. Mm -hmm. I'm just the guy who's going to have to go there and clean up the ditch, which is going to be a nightmare. Like kind of on Barbara Hill that we filled in eventually. Yeah, because if it was my idea, if it was my idea, that little ditch would just get piped because that's just a maintenance nightmare for the town. Because eventually, it would, like you say, it's not very deep. It will fill with leaves and crap. And but it's not up to us to decide that. Did the town engineer address that question? Are you concerned? I did not speak to him about it. Because he was waiting for the Len works off the revised plan. So he was he folded his copy and put it away and was waiting. So well, his it, original one on the right. Driveway crossing. That was his comment. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's all I just. So what what actions can we take if we approve this with the stipulation that you know the final drawings have to meet town engineer's approval? It could go back and forth until he's until he's happy. Until he's satisfied. Yeah. Okay. Uh, why don't we kind of make an exception here? We usually do. We usually wait till everything's done. That's what I said. And and then act on it. Instead of this is kind of like piecemeal. Mm -hmm. right. We'll send it to you, and then you okay. It. We'll send it to him. We'll. I my tenure on the board has been we get the final copy, and that's it. And Lynn is okay. And that's what I would put. Yeah. I don't know how the other. What you're I, I agree. That's why I brought it up. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm about commission long as Frank have, but take a few years. <laughs> I'm <using the> conception <laughs> <of the> commission. <laughs> okay, son. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, to give Len time to review and resolve the drainage issues, it seems to me we should continue the public hearing. Excuse me, have we not resolved the drainage issues? We've, we've addressed them and we'll be making those notes on the plan. I mean, I've been building this town 25 years, I mean, we can pretty much do everything on the notes. So I'm just curious that administratively they can't make that decision and or eventually the final approval on the drawing and hold me accountable without raising my bonds. So I mean that's the fail safe. So you know we, we put the bonds up and then we don't get them back until every note on you're satisfied. And if she said no, you definitely need revised plans for the commission to vote, I would have found this out and made another 145 copies of. These, these I mean, Len's notes to us literally was driveway slope and make sure the driveway is wide enough, pretty much. 
Mm -hmm. Stop the driver from the road and just change this note, change this note. Yeah, which one was more than happy to do. Yeah, just all, all, the beats to, that was it. all of a sudden, come all the way back here for another, you know, climb off and make trouble the ocean down then administratively, I think that can be still happening for you guys. Well, like I said before, I feel more comfortable when it signs off on it. I told you up for two weeks, but it should have been done ahead of time, in my opinion. We've never signed off on anything. It's like, you know, Lenny check, North Central check, Fire District Department check. That's the way it always works in town. Oh. <clears throat> There's some other documentation I, I think he wants too on the uh, calculation for the impervious coverage. And, and he, he has all that. When I got that email, I said, you, all that was submitted. <laughs> so he's seen it. I, I replied way double a month ago, probably. It was the day of that. Seven, eight? July 8th, yeah. That was a month ago when I had that conversation with him. <coughs> Something. Did we cover you that? Yes. Up here, so we got information. He didn't get revised plans yet. Because of that, I talked to him about uh, um, a lot at one time. What did Basically, he said, well, that's fine, but if we have to go back and forth, back and forth until we get it from you. So, Len was okay with it. I, I don't understand that the, the back and forth is all, all I'm doing is regrading this, these parts of the driveway to make sure they don't bring yeah. that there. That's the only change they're playing. I'm just saying that Len's mm -hmm. going to ask for what he wants until he gets it. Right. <laughs> that's all. That's an old tool like that. Yeah, just I know, yeah. That's where you his comments in the list. If staff was happy with it, I can go on. Well, I think we should add some type of a term I, I condition the old way, to, to state it. just to that fact. So I don't know if that would be so under why? which section specifically before the issuance of any permits, uh, probably. So it'd be well, a I think for right. designing the mylars. So Okay. Because he has to review those plans. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest under the first note there that says a copy of the final approved plans with revisions shall be submitted to the planning and development office and town engineer for review and comment. Okay, so that's simple enough just to modify conditional one. Yep. I mean, I can frankly understand, but staff already told me it's okay. Lanny's kind of okay with it. Maybe we have to set a policy after this, just saying. I won't do it again. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, so we don't, don't get rude with you. I've been here a lot long, so that's staff. Yeah. I understand, you know. Yeah. I I found something. As much as I would like to talk to Jim George. Well, oh, back in the 60s, we didn't do it. Be honest with you, if Mike Lanny hadn't signed off, I would have called him today and make sure he signed off like I did with North Texas. I'll hold up my email. I think it's just a lack of yeah. He won't hear back from my figure either. Yeah, he won't. He won't sign off until we get. I know. I'm not trying to shortchange anything here. We just sort of because they they are. Item one. This is how it is. I missed you. Item two. Here's a change. I missed you. Item three. Here's a change. I missed you. Monday morning there. Tomorrow morning, I'm getting camera about okay. that Yeah, okay. You If we add that in town engineer to condition one, we also have our traditional findings. Um, we understand there's no street lights on Scantic Road. And staff that's, is recommended. That's not true. There are street there lights. Are. Well, there oh, there's street street adequate street lights. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you've agreed to the fee in lieu of open space. And what and about the sidewalks? The sidewalks um, is still under discussion. You're proposing a waiver of that. Our policy has always been to require the fee in lieu of sidewalks, and then the town uses the funds where they deem sidewalks are appropriate. So our traditional finding would be that we require a fee in lieu of. Right, that's right in regulations. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. 
Joe, I'll make a compromise. Counts by the fire to do the work and we'll fill it in. It only makes the lots better. That would be a discussion with Glenn. Well, exactly. No, no, I'm not opposed to it. I, it's, I don't do want to see it as a requirement. To me, but well, I don't work. I don't think it's fair to make it a requirement. I understand that, but. We'll put it in. We'll talk to Glenn. You know. It's just that down the road, it's going to be an issue. Yeah, no, I agree. He's saying that there's an adequate street. street so we're going to change the item number one under that motion to there is adequate street lights on Scantic Road. Instead of there is no street lights. Yeah, because there are. Yeah, it's, there's plenty of street lights okay. on Scantic Road. Okay. Okay, with those edits, well, I guess first we would need to close the public hearing. Everybody good? Has everybody got what they need? Is there anybody else in the room who wants to comment on anything related to this? Okay, and nobody online but Peg, so um, right. a motion to close the public hearing would be in order. Just so I'm clear, this is both applications under one yes. public hearing. Yes. 16 and 18. Okay. So I make a motion. We close the public hearing for PZ 2022 16 and 18 for 138 Scanic Roads, resubdivision special use permit. And the applicant is Travis Needlinger. Is there a second to that? A second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Peg, that's unanimous. Thank you. Um, we have the resubdivision and the rear lot special permit. Okay, um, so first we need to take up the waiver um with respect to street lights on Scantic Road. Excuse me, Ann, which application are you doing right now? 16. 16. 22-16. Thank you. So we're in agreement that we don't need any more street lights. With what's existing? Yeah, there's just one. Yeah. All right. Then I'll make a motion to approve the request for a waiver of section 6.5 of the East Windsor subdivision regulations pertaining to the installation of streetlights for application PZ 2022 16, resubdivision application map 44, block 33, lot 001, 137 Scantic Road. The applicant owner is Travis Needlinger. And the finding is there is adequate street lighting on Scantic Road. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. Now, the question for staff is this draft motion. We have two applications pending, both um, 16 and 18. And the motion to approve that's drafted only seems to relate to 16. 16. Do we have another motion for 18? I well, do not hear one for 18. Oversight. Mm -hmm. Mike, I just I was just referring to him. So we have this one and Mike is. I can, do we want to have them go to the next one? We just have a full one. the rear lot. Yeah, special permit. We have some time for it. There's some, they can go to 22 17. So, do we want to take up the motion to approve 2022 16 and then move on to another public hearing and then come back? And take up 18 while Mike drafts another motion. I put all the map changes. 
Okay, then I, uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, address the uh, application of PZ 2022-18 out of order, and we will address it at the end of the discussion of PZ 22-19. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Okay. okay. Do you want to make a motion on 2022-16? Okay. I'll make a motion to approve application PZ 2022-16 for a three lot subdivision located at 137 Scandic Road, map 44, block 33, lot 001. The owner applicant is Travis Needlinger. This approval is granted subject to the performance with the reference plans as may be modified by the commission and the following additional conditions and modifications. This approval is granted subject to the conformance with reference plans as may be modified by the commission in this approval and the following conditions and modifications. Uh, under reference plans, we have items one through five. Under conditions which must be met prior to signing of Mylar's modification of item number one to read a copy of the final approved plans with revisions shall be submitted to the planning and development office and town engineer for review and comments. And continuing on conditions two through four, and then under conditions meeting must be met prior to issuance of a permit or five through 10. Conditions which must be met prior to the issuance of certificate of occupancy are 11 through 14. And general conditions are 15 through 19. All from a memo that was from Ruth Calabrese, Director of Planning and Development dated July 28th, 2022. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Second by Dave. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Okay, Peg, that's unanimous. So we will take up PZ 2022-17, 148 North Road. Excuse me, may I ask a question real quick? Do you, since you just approved the three lot subdivision, do we need to wait here for you to approve the rear lot? Um, we are going to take that up later in well, sequence. I if you that. So I'm just asking, do you need us here? So we've and already approved the public lot. hearing has been closed, so we can't we ask can't, any more questions. We won't be able to okay. have any conversation with you. Our conversation will only be with town staff when we take that up. Is there going to be a public hearing for that app for the special use application? No, we close, or we've got already we closed the public hearing. So you don't use the We can't. I have a cold beer. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay. You are, you are more than welcome to stay. Okay, application PZ 2022-17, 148 North Road, Unit 3, special use permit for a drug testing laboratory. The applicant is Stephen Henry. Is Stephen Henry here? Oh. Okay. Well, if we don't have an applicant to present what they are proposing, I guess we will. Applicant on Zoom? No. Just the meeting and room and pay. Huh? Us and pay. Well, if that's the case, I'll, I'll make a motion that we uh, postpone or continue the plan. We haven't even started it, so it's not a continuance. It's a postponement of the public hearing of PZ 2022-17, 148 North Road, Unit 3, Special Use Permit for Drug Testing Laboratory application. The applicant is Stephen Henry uh, until our next meeting, which will be August 23rd. Is there a second to that motion? Second. 
motion, a second, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Poor Mike thought he had more time. <laughs> <laughs> so that takes us to PZ 2022-19, 297 North Road. A special use permit for renewal of a soil management area. The applicant is North Road Materials LLC. Yeah, we'll skip that one too. <laughs> uh, Merrick Kemet uh, and Stanley Kemet Jr. here from um, North Road Materials LLC uh, represent this application. Uh, just some housekeeping items. I'm going to hand over uh, both of the public sign, the original, as well as the certified mailings. Uh, just a recap of what this project is, many of you remember it. Um, it's a soil management facility uh, located on two parcels. Uh, one is the tenant construction yard, and then the other one is the former uh, landfill. Uh, located on North Road uh, on that 97 North Road. Uh, the facility is basically a, a testing station where the material will come in, be dumped in, in these bins, concrete bins, be tested, and whether they're polluted or not determines the location. So if they were polluted soil or contaminated soil, they would be hauled back off site. If they're clean material, then they would be dumped on site um, as part of the existing landfill and, and mounted on site or we use in a different manner. Uh, we're here before you to get a renewal, three-year renewal. Uh, last time we received both prior application, we had a one-year permit. Uh, the second time we came in, you extended it to a three-year permit. So we're also requesting an additional three-year, or if we could go to a five-year permit, that would be correct. Uh, one, of the, one of the items I added in my letter to the commission, I don't know if you have it in front of you, is that I've never noticed this before, but condition six makes a note that there's no processing of any material within the subject area. Well, as you all know, the construction yard is an active construction yard and there's active processing happening all the time. So that notation, I never thought it last time. I don't even know how it got in there, but it also contradicts with uh, condition number 14, which in the last sentence allows us to use on site sub grinders. The use of sub grinders is a processing of material. So, all we're asking is for condition six to um, either be deleted or, or reworded. Uh, we do have a condition, I believe it's number 10 on the plans, which states that there's an existing construction on our site, um, utilizing um, active processing. Uh, Remain on place. So there's a request for what happens. We don't have a condition, Mike. Yeah, we don't. Yeah. You have what? No, we don't have the conditions. I was just. It wasn't in the package wasn't we got. Everybody's looking scrambled. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're not here. This is going to have my copy here. I have it. You have it there? You do. I have your note. Oh, no, the no, no, no. Like the connection. That the original. No, I don't mention. We don't have a there, staff right memo or anything to go with this. Thing. Uh, the okay. reason there's oh, no, no staff memo is she's requesting okay. I saw a that. survey, okay. and that hasn't been done. Okay. Yeah. I don't think we have a complete package. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, it was never part of as part of mine that's already in the condition. Please, oh. honestly, just be, be quiet. We never would have known anything about condition six. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm asking that for a minute. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I do have a copy here. I can, if you wanted to read it, there's, I know it's going to be yours, but I have no problem. Yeah. Make another copy. Should do it on this end. You can see it this way. But I had in number six and number mm -hmm. I yeah. 14 that contradict each other. <laughs> so yeah. while you're reading yeah. that, I have one other item to address. Uh, Ruth had asked for an as built of the plan. Um, when we originally got the permit three years ago, COVID hit. 
everything stopped. Our focus was actually on subdivision. You remember that lovely subdivision that we have cohort? We also had a couple of deaths in the family, so things kind of spiral and we didn't get to move on this thing. So we do not have bins installed. We do not have a scale installed. We have not even brought in any material under North Road materials LLC. So the site is actually um, not active to that extent. We do have processing from the construction yard still on site, but there is some site work that has been started. We're preparing a haul road for this project, and we're also starting on the drainage detention areas uh, for the project. But we don't have the bins, we haven't been bringing the material, and we don't have the scale house. Um, so we really haven't been working under the permit. Uh, with that said, doing the as built for that type of work, not having anything, seemed like a cost burden to us. Um, I hope you feel the same way, but if not, we have been in contact with Jay from Musso's office, so he will be picking up. Um, if you do require an ethical, we will have an ethical for you guys. Um, the prior surveyors of the plan before you, and no longer work there, so I can't prepare any of the plans anymore. Any I'll, I'll, Mary, I'll just make the comment that you know, whenever we kind of end one permit and start a new one, we kind of take a snapshot of where we are at that time. So that's kind of the requirement, even though you haven't really done, then just have somebody certify that the drawings that you've done are still adequate or ad accurate. Um, but as you've said, you've changed, you've added the road, you've added some- Or we'll start so, to work on it under the correct, correct. But that's that's the whole intent. And whenever a permit starts, we have a snapshot of what it's like at that time. Yeah, I also understand, I believe Blue Van Landlord were out on site, so I think they're familiar with did you look at that? I will. Yeah. yeah, so they did. Uh, I know Len also submitted a letter that he was okay with that. But the plan they did submit as part of the this permit were the original plan that it has to do. So. Um, and like I said, I do have Jay ready to go. The, yeah, I'm kind of quickly skimming through this. Is there any? maximum height restrictions of the uh, uh you're saying stuff that stays on site and it's going to be stockpiled and accumulated is there there's not a mention of any kind of the maximum plan shows that we need 40 feet high. Yeah, we but nothing in us nothing in the conditions as far as maximum because what i'm getting at is if we start extending the permit a longer period of time there still has to be some type of a, a trigger mechanism even though if the permit hasn't expired if you reach a certain Height of you know that you basically yeah. run out of capacity. No, I understand. Um, you can put a height limit on it. Well, so, can I get to that point? Yeah. We, we could bring in a million dollars on that site, and then we haven't even. I, th I thought we addressed that issue at the last about three years ago. That that wasn't this application, wasn't it? The uh, the one for those concrete crushing? No, but it's that her it's, it's, it, it was the concrete crushing. Her view's on 30 feet. 30 yeah. Feet. yeah. yeah. No, yeah. yeah. no, but then this one had a cap elevation already on the thing. It did. There, there's an elevation that is maxed. Yeah. Is it? I believe it's 48. I, I thought it was, oh, my memory's going, but I thought it was 40 feet. Well, you were out there. What do you think? We're at 190. You're saying 190. We're at 190. You did a site visit. Does it look like things? Have changed? That's our elevation there. Yeah, that's, that's why it's elevation. So you're already there. No, that's the proposal. Yeah. Oh, what, uh, I, thought this yeah. was, I thought this was right. No, if you go yeah. back one, that's what the existing. Like, and we have elevations here anywhere. Like it's been since 2018, things aren't what they look like in 2018. Okay, I, I can't so read it. Here's the overall site. If you can read that elevation there. Oh, well, that's 110, 108. Yeah, that's about what it is. That's the existing, roughly, because that's the existing soil that wouldn't go. Figures, maybe a site plan wouldn't hurt. Okay. Existing conditions. We're going to be talking about 80 feet. Yeah. Originally, it was an extension of the existing landfill. You know, obviously, we're not bringing in any, any MSW or anything like that. It was pretty secure. And we came in under the um, excavation section of the regulation. <coughs> I don't think we've had any complaints out there. If there's any issues with traffic, I don't believe any of that is the case. Like I said, it has been dormant due to many, many factors.
Mm -hmm. And if we and I can also offer if, if you would like an ad bill, you can you can just give us a little time. We'll, we'll get that in afterwards to be reviewed administratively. The permit can get reviewed. Okay. Well, we don't have a motion prepared by staff. We're going to have to rewrite the terms and conditions to update the changes that you want. Mm -hmm. uh, is is the next meeting adequate enough time for you to have the uh, as built drawn? I don't think so. No. So how? Uh, I, would, I would love to see it. I can't speak for a day. I can tell you right now, really, that was like months. Yeah. It's awful. It's awful. I can speak for Jay. <laughs> you get a in two weeks. <laughs> I'm in the business, so I know. So he's so far behind. Unless you want to go home, call. So my, would people be willing to um, accept a condition added that as builds be provided by date X, as opposed to if it, he's months out on getting them? Well, I mean, you've, you've kind of been out there and verified that there hasn't been a, a major change. She doesn't know the white right before. That's the first time I went she doesn't. Okay. Know. I know there's activity. Yeah. There is a grading. And... Round is flat out there. There's no yeah, there's big mound that you're looking yeah. at in the plan. There's no stockpiles of sand, there's no mm -hmm. stockpiles of topsoil. All that stuff's got to be moved out of the way. We have to yeah. dig out an area for these uh, drainage detention areas, the two of them. Yeah. Got a pipe across the, the way, and then none of that. I feel comfortable letting it go because, I mean, it never started too much. And, They've been in town 100 years and not going. No, they're not going anywhere. But I mean, at this point, we're not we're not prepared. We don't no, have no, no, yeah, we, we don't we don't have enough. we don't have terms and conditions. We don't have. So, what, so, like, Scott, like, come on, wait. Not, uh, <laughs> he's writing the other one still. <laughs> can, can we continue the two weeks from now, and we'll have all of our stuff together? And if at that time we can write a condition for the adding of the. Drawing at a later date. No problem. In fact, that's where it sounds good. And we can talk to Jay and find out what kind of timeline. Okay. Really okay. So that's not, not put that into the staff. And we'll okay. even, even consider the five year. <laughs> so I make a motion that we continue the public hearing for PZ 2022 19 297 North Road, a special use permit renewal for soil management facility. Applicant is North Road Materials LLC until our next meeting, which will be August 23rd. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Peg, that's unanimous. In the second one. Thank you. Thank you. So that brings us back to Mike and if we had adequate time. So technically we're like beer is getting warm. We'll sit and chill. Because <laughs> everything else is nothing on the agenda. Um, I don't know if you want this. This is the previous terms and conditions, and this was the amended motion. Yes. So I basically kept it simple, incorporating a copy of the motion on the plans. Number two, the approval conditions established for PZ 2216 are hereby referenced and incorporated into this approval. All necessary revisions shall be made prior to the execution of this special permit. And the proposed driveway shall be constructed in accordance with 408.2H of zone regulations. Which just that covers this, the yeah. vegetation, this, you know, that's trees. Um, with them. Did yeah. I miss anything else? Were there any other outstanding comments? Because 
basically we could just say shall be I, I can well, say reference the other right application with that element not changing it just right. really well, yeah. yeah. so you know making it making it clear that the approval is inherently tied together and I don't know if there was anything else that uh, you guys talked about that might have missed that yeah so that's uh 6.6.9 right d so because this is a special permit i referenced the zoning reg which is what says 12 feet of adequate surface yeah, uh, 12 feet with yeah, tree should travel. be preserved or planted along with such sides for the right of way in accordance with section 6.1.1e. So so you want me to include I haven't been in for um 6.6.9b. Did it for, for Rockville or Rock? And do we have a title or something that to reference this memo? Um, Latin memo? No. When we normally yes. when we make a motion, we um, reference the memo of which we're stating this from. Well, we're writing on the fly, so there isn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's called it's Mike's memo. Instead yeah. of yeah, Just instead of <laughs> throw a date on it, then. <laughs> Instead of referencing conditions one through three, just you can just read them and then it will be picked up as part okay. Of the All right. Then look. Sorry, I don't have a printer in my backpack. Okay. So everybody good? We're we can roll with this. Yep. Okay. I make a uh, motion to approve application. PZ 22-19 special use permit for rear lot at 137 Scandic Road. The applicant is Tri Travis Needlinger. This approval is granted subject to the conformance with the reference plan and the presentations as may be modified, made, yeah. made by the applicant to the commission as may be modified by the commission and this approval and the following conditions and modifications. Under reference plans, we have R3 residential zone resub division prepared for Travis W. Needlinger, 137 Stanick Road, East Windsor, prepared by Barisi Associates, LLC, sheet one through 11, prepared June 29th, 2022. Condition number one, a copy of this motion shall be incorporated into the final mylars. Condition number two, the approval, approval conditions established for PZ 22, uh, PZ 20, 22-16 yeah. are hereby referenced and incorporated into this approval. All necessary revisions shall be made prior to the execution of the special permit. Condition number three, the proposed driveway shall be constructed and maintained in accordance with section 408.3H of the zoning regulation and section 6.6.9D of the subdivision regulation. I think when you were reading, you said 19 instead of 18 okay. for the application number. Okay, well, I, I definitely want to make it as PZ 2022-18. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Any discussion? 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yes, we're locked. And the second was David. Yes, it was. Thank you. Okay. Before your battery died, it didn't exist. Okay, we'll have to transcribe it. We have no old business, no new business, no other business, no correspondence, no business meeting, no executive session. Hold on, I think we've got two new commissioners in the audience now. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no. Oh. Okay. Then a uh, motion to adjourn at eight twenty would be in order. I motion that. <laughs> I motion that we make adjourn at eight twenty. Second. I don't think Frank can make it. I can't make it. They make the motion. <laughs> I used to be able to. We yeah. used to. <laughs> we'll make a motion at eight twenty p.m. that we adjourn the meeting. Is there a second? Oh, God. Second. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Got your name in breath now. All those in favor? <laughs> Meeting is adjourned. Oh.